Hey there, Greg Marchand here. So something came up with a, in a conversation, a coaching uh, conversation I, I had the other day with a client, and and it was about customer resolution and and how do we how do we resolve a difficult situation? And and oftentimes you'll end up in these situations where where look, you know it's not your fault, but you can't prove it's the customer's fault, and even if it is the customer's fault, you're not going to win um, because the customer is looking for resolution and. And what I what I suggest to everybody when they come to me and say, how do you think this should get resolved? I always look for these, you know, you call them win-win situations, but they're 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 less of a loss situation, really. So, for instance, in my in my automotive world, oftentimes we'll have a customer that's that's really upset. And and look, it may not be the repair shop's fault that that whatever went wrong went wrong, and it may not be the customer's fault that whatever went wrong went wrong. Stuff happens, but we have a situation that doesn't look good. You know, I, I brought my car in for an oil change, and now the check engine light's on. Whatever it might be, you know, I I, I had tires put on the car, and and now uh, my wheel is bent. It's your fault. Well, I know we didn't bend the wheel, but you probably hit a pothole. But I can't prove you hit a pothole, and I'm not going to win this, right? So what do I do? So in the automotive repair world. One of the easy outs that I use all the time, and I saw a new term for this the other day, um, it was our cost, customer's expense. Now, I don't, I don't necessarily like that term, but that's what that's what this guy used, um, and he's in the uh, he runs a, a used car store up in up in New Hampshire. Um, so, what it is is, is there a way that I can I can have the customer cover my cost? While I am giving something of equal or greater value to the customer, and, and what I do in the automotive repair scenario is this: I give the customer parts at cost, so the customer knows they're paying my cost on parts, and then I'll pay the labor. Well, what does the labor cost me? See, the labor as a repair shop doesn't cost me what the customer would have to pay. Right? The customer has to pay the door rate. And these days, it's, it's somewhere between $140 and $175 an hour. So the customer knows, I'm going to pay the labor. So what, what they think immediately is, if it's, let's just say it's two hours labor, because I like easy math, and it's $150 labor rate, then I'm paying $300, and they're going to pay my cost on parts. And maybe, maybe that's $75. Bucks. Maybe it's $200. They perceive... Because perception is everything, right? They perceive that I am paying a lot more. The reality is, what am I really paying as a business? I'm not making a profit on any of this, right? But what do I pay? I pay whatever the part costs that the customer is going to cover, and I pay whatever I'm paying the technician, which is somewhere these days between, say, $20 and $40 an hour. So if it is two hours, I'm paying $80 to my top technician to make sure this problem gets resolved. So it costs me $80. The customer is going to pay something for the part. Let's say it's $100. I don't lose. I'm going to be out 80 bucks. All right. Can I recover 80 bucks as a business? I can recover 80 bucks as a business. I'm not too worried about that. My technician doesn't lose because I'm paying the technician and the customer is going to pay cost on that part. So I won't say it's a no cost resolution because it's not. It's costing the customer something and it's costing me something. But the reality is, the perception is, this is pretty fair. The shop is paying more than I'm paying as a customer because I'm, I'm just paying part cost and I'm going to get the problem resolved. Now, if you can do that in your world, I encourage you to to look for those resolutions.